Good day everyone, I am Joyce Raimunda from Tarlac State University and today I am going to present our game-based instructional material that covers the lesson about ordinal numbers in third grade mathematics. And this material is entitled Mathalinong Paglalakbay. And this material, the core used are Microsoft PowerPoint and Hyperlink. Basically, it is just the usual process of creating slides in any design you prefer. On our part, we made sure that creativity doesn't stop to where the usual ones go, and we want to go further, go beyond the limits, and discover and create more efficient and more effective strategies that will deepen and strengthen the teaching learning process. What we are after at is the interactive learning. As defined by Oxford Dictionary, interactive learning is a holistic methodology that encourages independent study and has both online and offline components, which together make a complete educational experience. And so, this material can be done through online and or offline. Online, if you're going to utilize this with your teacher, most probably during synchronous sessions. The teacher is the one who facilitates the game in which both the teacher and the students learn. Moreover, this material can also be done offline in which this step can be considered as the independent learning. The process in doing this material requires a quite huge amount of time and patience. However, at the end of it, the teaching and learning process will become more engaging, more exciting, and more fun. So how can we make this presentation? So generally, the first thing you should have in mind just before you start doing your material is of course the plan. The theme, the concept, and the processes on how the material goes through and through should be thoroughly examined, planned, and devised. The next thing you must do is to be certain with what you have planned. It would be very difficult to accomplish the task if you have a lot of things in mind, and by then, you'll be changing your ideas more frequently, which may lead you to end up not to accomplish anything. So those two are just two minor strategies we have to keep in mind, most especially in doing instructional materials. So moving on, other process in doing this material is quite easy since we, are, we already have prior knowledge in creating a presentation out of Microsoft PowerPoint. However, there are some more mediums online that can be used in creating templates. And on our case, we made the use of Canva. Right after that, we made the questionnaires that served as the highlight of this material. Some were self-made and some were adopted from the internet. On a side note, on creating this instruction, we also take into consideration the fact that learners are diverse and the learners learn differently. And so we came up into an idea that the composition of these questions are mixtures of audios for auditory learners, videos and images for visual learners, and word form problems for other types of learners like kinesthetics and etc. In continuation, right after inputting the content of the presentation, as well as the animations and transitions, we are now going to integrate the hyperlink. So the process here now is very much simple as well. So step one, highlight the text or object you would like to hyperlink. Then right click the highlighted text and select hyperlink. After doing so, from the link to side panel, choose the destination for your hyperlink. And on our case, what we just did is place the link of the presentation itself. We chose the slides we wish to link to. And uh, now let's proceed to how can this material be utilized in the classroom. This instruction is very flexible because it can be easily utilized in any setup, whether online or face-to-face. -face. Moreover, this is not the usual presentations we get to see in any classroom environment since this is a game-based one. As we are all aware of, this type of material is more likely to be for assessments, for icebreakers, for motivations, and such. 
And so we are here to break that notion that this material is for those stuff only. In fact, that feature being a game-based makes this material stand out more compared to others because with this, it will enable the learners to think independently, critically, and creatively. If integrating this in a classroom environment, we will be able to hone, develop, enhance, and even discover a lot more skills and talents of the students. We will be able to see how students put themselves in a situation where only, where only the person they can rely on in terms of their learning are themselves. So, as uh, you can see here in the, the first thing that the students will see is the title page. So it is important for students to know first what the thing is they, they are they are the thing they are dealing with so that they can have a little brain trigger. Their curiosity will then bloom and a lot of questions will then rise up in their head. And by that, their critical thinking starts to work on and will drive them to be more participative and attentive in the class instruction. Right after that, the general guideline of the instructions should be given clearly. Also, it is important that before starting an, an instruction, students' queries must be cleared up for a smoother and a better flow of instruction because if students' thoughts weren't unloaded, tendencies are, their interest will no longer be up on the activity. So now let's proceed to the actual manipulation of this game-based instruction. So this game will allow the students to learn mathematics and virtually travel and visit the provinces and some of the tourist spots here in the region three. There are seven provinces and seven tourist spots in this game and the players have the freedom to choose the place where they want to go. In each province, there are 15 problems about ordinal numbers that the players need to solve to continue in the game and gain more points. So in this game, each place has its corresponding points for every correct answer. If the player gets three wrong answers, he or she will not be able to continue in the game. And the one who has the greatest number of points will be the winner of the game. So in creating this material, it was also taken into consideration that hints or clues should be provided for learners because this might be the first time for them to encounter the lesson. And without prior knowledge, it would become a very difficult instance for them. And this would serve also as their benchmark in proceeding with the actual material. So are you guys ready to search on and delve deeper on our material? And I guess you are, so let's start. For example, we want to go to Tarlac and we would want to answer the question number two. In the questions, all of the choices will direct you on just two options so that is either correct or wrong. So if correct, let's say for example on this problem, what is the missing ordinal number? 26, 27, 28, 29th, blank, and 31st. So the correct answer here is 30th. So by clicking it, on the slide where it says that you got the correct answer. And another example, for example, we want to go to Pampanga. And we are going to answer question number four. The question is, what is the 10th letter of the word mathematics? For example, um, the answer here is, uh, we are going to answer this question H. 
And we all know that H is the wrong answer. And by clicking the wrong answer, where it, it says you got the wrong answer and it says better luck next time. Okay, so those are just some of the slides presented in this game. So if the questions had already been picked, the box will turn to black to indicate that the question has already been answered. Those effects you've seen are the hyperlinks. So as stated by Stacy G2017 on his article, hyperlink function in PowerPoint allows users to advance from one slide to another slide in their presentation when they click on a predetermined word, shape, or image, thereby allowing for a more dynamic and interactive experience than can be obtained with serial presentation of slides alone. And that hyperlinks can turn a passive learning experience into an active one by allowing the participant to be more engaged with the presentation. And so after that, the student can go to other more places, collect more points, and with following the same process, they just have to pick a place, a question from the certain place, and proceed with the answering. This instruction is highly timely and relevant to what education setup we are facing right now. Learnings are in the hand of the learners and teachers serve as the guide from the side. This kind of, of instruction is very learner-centered because information are not given by teachers instantly and there is no spoon feeding that is happening at all. With that concept, I see, or our group sees that the benefits this instruction could give to both the students and teachers are two approaches that could be possibly applied. These are self-paced learning. My passengers are waiting in line. Learning. If Miss Hannah and is the first in line, teachers have more specific benefits on their own. So self-paced learning means you can learn on your own time and schedule. You can proceed from one topic or segment to the next at your own speed. And with that, we all know that this is suitable for different learning styles. As we all know, some people learn fast while others take their time. People who prefer to complete the material quickly should not have to wait for others. And self-paced learning makes it possible for participants to adopt to their different learning styles. Moreover, students are able to monitor and assess themselves. And with this, students will be able to feel the sense of responsibility with their own learning. In this case, we are extremely practicing and promoting independent learning and learner-centered approach, which happen to be our new normal. On the other hand, another approach is the teacher being the one who manipulates the whole material or the teacher-centered approach. In this manner, assessing the student's overall performance is still observed. And what is good about this approach is that the teacher actually assesses his or her student's performances with no other factors that affect his or her judgments towards his or her students. And in addition, the grading of the teacher to the students is more authentic, more reliable because attitudes, behaviors, as well as skills are seen boldly. Other than that, the benefits of this instruction offers to students and teachers are first, the social emotional growth through development of soft skills. Second, increase a child's memory capacity. Third, computer and simulation fluency. And lastly, strategic thinking and problem solving. Again, that is Masalinong Paglalakbay from Tarlac State University.